Humboldtians. Uh, some of you may, may um, be wondering, what is, what is the Humboldtian cosmos then? So he has quite a lot of discussion of this in the opening of the first volume, and so I'm, I'm reducing several pages into four brief lines on top. Cosmos, he uh, deliberately resurrected the ancient Greek word referring to the assemblage of all things in heaven and earth. This is, by the way, a 19th century translation. We are still awaiting a modern translation of cosmos, um, um, I hope, soon. Or, universe, order of the world, and adornment of this universal order. So what I have, and the italics are my interpretive work on this, uh, that the physical universe is distinct from but conjoined with the mind insofar as mind composes or assembles the pluriverse into this universe that is what beauty, ornament, and order, that is art and science. In other words, there will always be, in Humboldt's thinking, a physical universe apart from our minds, apart from us. Um, it evolves on cosmic uh, and geological timescales, but the cosmos, in Humboldt's thinking, is composed on historical timescales in the reciprocal interaction of mind and materiality. So uh, in, in this day of, of environmental stresses and global warming, what's at threat is not the physical cosmos, is not the physical universe, excuse me, but the cosmos, this, this grand historical uh, a drama that's been playing out um, over millennia, um, that is this reciprocal uh, interaction um, of mind with nature. Yet for Humboldt, every picture must reveal the act of its own composition. So some of these annotations grow into entire finished essays on their own account. Uh, disquisitions on the cross-cultural practice of eating earth, on Amazonian petroglyphs, on indigenous peoples who build their houses and trees, on the use of camels as domestic animals, on currents and vegetation, and phosphorescence of seawater, and on and on it goes.